I'm Tim the Smith, for those of you who don't know me. Otherwise known as some call him. <laughs> they called us wizards once. Some know enough to still call us the same. And there's reason for that. The lore goes way best. Not all of you know them. But you know some basic things, right? What? You know why? There's one tale that's my favorite. The oldest I've heard comes down from the Magi of the East. Before the secrets of iron, before Hephaestus, before the secrets of steel, before Vulcan, there were bronze smiths. And there is a tale of the troublesome ones, sometimes the deceiving ones, the shin, who would turn up and make mischief. We've got ours. They're the same everywhere, just different names. And they would show up at this Smith's shop and make mischief. So you got tired of that early Smith. Other places, they call him Cain, Paul Cain, first Smith. Other places, the name changes, but he's still the same fellow. And he knew the magic, not only whole things from stones that were useful. But also, he's the one who discovered a trick with metal that only the potters had known. You know, if you take two pieces of mud and whack them together and rub them around a little bit, you wet it back. There aren't two pieces. There's one, right? That's a well on a lead. This smith figured it out, and that gin took trouble away. And he got tired of that, so one day he caught that gin by the tail and welded it to his anvil and never had trouble from him or his kind again. That's one version of the tale. Bronze is no good for worship. You wouldn't waste it on that. It's too expensive. Copper, tin, these are not cheap things. But once we have iron, we make shoes. There's another tale that grows out of that one. It's my favorite. It is said in a remote part of the Black Forest because all the best stories in Germany come from the Black Forest. It was remote enough that Smith could also be a farrier and not get into trouble. And it was remote enough that while he ran the forge and the stable, his wife kept an inn above their house. It said in that place at that time, the devil himself showed up while he was traveling on his black horse. And leapt off as full of pride as only the devil can be. Tossed his reins at the smith and said, Stable, shoe me. I'll settle with you in the morning. Only the devil has them. Smith said, as you will, I took the reins, went off with the horse. That deceiver went on inside the inn. And he's something of a gentleman. The night went well. He comes out in the morning, collects his horse, inspects the shoes. The job is perfect. What do I owe you? Well, says that canny Smith, who's had to live by his wits in the middle of the forest middle of nowhere. As you didn't bargain with me before you signed the work. Here is my price. Neither you nor yours shall ever trouble me or mine. Ever again. Ever. And that is why Elf says Tamta in, leave us alone. They see a horse, <laughs> and they remember of their kind that in his pride their master was foolish enough to say, do the work, I'll settle with you later. And it was a smith who got the better of the devil bargain. So, you get the one. 
we can pass it on to you. If you've ever noticed above a stable, above a farrier, above a smithy, their shoe is arms down. We're the wizards. We make the luck. And we hang our cup of luck upside down so it runs out over all who pass through our door. You come to us and get a used shoe that we've crafted. You could take that home. You keep the arms up. Because over house, the arms are up. So you keep the luck in and in your house. And those poor creatures of the night, those tricksters who make their mischief, they will leave you alone. Because they don't know that it's not a smith inside that dwelling. Take it. <laughs> <laughs> that is just a little snippet of why they used to call us wizards. <laughs>